good day. This is the school nutrition team. This slide, you can see the best for all strategic priorities. As you can see, academics, educators, and student readiness are the three priorities for the department. The work of school nutrition falls under the student readiness priority, which includes Tennessee Public Schools will be equipped to serve the academic and non-academic needs of all students in their career pathway. Again, school nutrition helps to support those non-academic needs. The Office of School Nutrition has a mission statement, and our mission statement is to develop extraordinary school nutrition professionals and provide strategies to increase consumption of healthy school meals. Today's training objectives include reviewing the household application, review how to determine student eligibility based off income, and we will discuss all required items to complete an application. Now, let's take a look at household applications. Household applications. All pricing school districts must make the free and reduced price applications available to all students for this coming school year. Again, the application must be made available to all students within your school district. The household application is an easy way for families to have a streamlined application that they can submit. All applications must be processed within 10 days of receiving the application. So that means each school district, once you receive the application from a family, must process the application within 10 days. The School Food Authority, or SFA, determines if the effective date of benefits is the date the application was submitted or the date the application is approved. So again, your school food authority determines the effective dates of benefits based on whether the application was submitted on a particular date or if the application was approved on a particular date. Here is the prototype household application for free and reduced price meals. This prototype application can be found on our school nutrition website. If you need assistance navigating our website, please reach out to your school nutrition regional consultant and we would be happy to help show you where this is on our website. On this prototype application, there are four steps highlighted in green. We will have a knowledge check on the next slide with a one question quiz for your understanding of a complete application that is ready to be processed. Step one listed on this application is to list all students up to grade 12 in this section. Note that there is a checkbox to indicate student, foster, homeless, migrant, or runaway. Step two on the application is for a family to indicate they are receiving SNAP or Families First from the Department of Human Resources and to indicate the active case number. Step three has two parts for, with the first being A, if the child receives income from sources such as Social Security or other means, and the second part, B, is to list all household members, the gross income before taxes, and then to list how often the income is received. For example, weekly, bi-weekly, twice a month, or monthly. Note, a very important line at the bottom of the, this section that must be completed is the total household members and the last four digits of the social security number. It is fine to accept an application with the check mark that indicates that they do not have a social security number. If that is checked, then you can leave blank. 
but you cannot leave the last four digits of the social security number blank if there is not a check mark in the check if no social security number box. Step four is great to have all the information filled out, but remember you must have a signature. Let's try a quick quiz. So household application with income. What information must be included on the household application for the application to be considered complete? Check all that apply. We will give you a moment to review the answer options and think about what information is required for a household application. Let's review the answers. Again, the question was, what information must be included on the household application for the application to be considered complete? We've bolded the answers. So information that must be on the household application to be considered complete include the names of all household members, the amount and source of gross income for each family member, the frequency of income for each family member, a signature of an adult household member, and the last four digits of the social security number or indication that the family member does not have one. Now that we know what is required for a household application, let's look at processing household applications with income. We need to be mindful of the income conversion. Also, if there is no conversion, for example, if there is only one source of income or if all sources are received in the same frequency, no conversion is required. The conversion, if there are multiple income sources with more than one frequency, annualize all income. So that looks like multiplying weekly income by 52, or you multiply bi-weekly income, so every two weeks by 26, you can multiply semi-monthly income, so twice a month, by 24. And you can multiply monthly income by 12. And again, if you have any questions or concerns when it comes to income conversions, you can always reach out to your regional nutrition consultant for additional technical assistance. Now, let's test your knowledge of income conversions with this example. A family submitted an application with the following income. What is the total annual income? The application reports $1,000 biweekly and $100 weekly. Again, what is the annualized income? Please take a moment to do your conversions and come up with your answer. Let's work through this problem together. So the income conversion example, to get our annualized income, we need to annualize the weekly income by multiplying $100 by 52 pay periods. This equals $5,200 annually. Then to annualize the bi-weekly income, we multiply by 26. Again, that is 1,000 times 26 pay periods, which equals $26,000 annually. Then add the two annualized amounts together for a total annual income. 
So $26,000 plus $5,200 gives us $31,200 as a total annual income for this example. The income eligibility guidelines chart provides the detailed information that you need to consider when reviewing and approving household applications. These items include the household size, um, the annual income, and it's also broken down by monthly, twice per month, every two weeks, and weekly income thresholds compared to the federal poverty guidelines. Again, if you have any questions or need further clarity as to how to read the income eligibility guidelines, please reach out to your regional consultant. Now, let's look at an independent review of applications. So the local education agencies, the LEAs, designated by the state agency as demonstrating high levels of or high risk for administrative error associated with certification and benefit issuance are required to conduct a second review of applications. The second review must be conducted by an independent individual or entity that did not make the original eligibility determination. So that means someone else besides typically the school nutrition personnel that determine eligibility for the household application needs to review these applications. LEAs with certification and benefit issuant errors equal to or greater than 10% on an administrative review must conduct an independent review. So this means if your school food authority is reviewed during an administrative review and we notice that there are certification and benefit issuant errors equal to or greater than 10 percent, your LEA will need to conduct an independent review. The results of the independent review are reported in the Tennessee Meals Accounting and Claiming System or TMAC. If you have any questions uh, regarding an independent review of applications, again, please don't hesitate to reach out to our state staff. Moving along to processing categorically eligible applications. For this part, we will look at SNAP or TANF information. So we're looking for names of the children for whom the application is made. SNAP or TANF case number for the child or children or for any household member listed on the application. So again, we're looking for those case numbers and those case numbers are typically 10 to 12 digits and we take um, the information at face value. Any applicant seeking foster is also taking at face, taken at face value. And as a best practice, it's best to find the students on the direct certified list associated with the case number because it takes them out of the verification pool. And again, we're looking for a signature of an adult household member on that application. We want to note that migrant and homeless cannot be taken at face value. It must be verified by a homeless and or migration liaison at the LEA level. We will talk about extended eligibility and foster migrant runaway students later in the presentation. Incomplete household applications. What is an incomplete application? Applications that fail to indicate the amount of income for each adult house member and instead provide pay stubs. Applications missing the signature of an adult household member not listing all family members, not including the last four digits of a parent's social security number, or checking the box that they do not have a social security number. So if any of these items are missing 
on a household application, it is considered incomplete. In the event that you come across an incomplete household application, you should follow up with the household. You can return the application to the household to get the required information that is missing. You may contact the child's parent or guardian, either by phone or in writing, including an email. Make every reasonable effort to obtain the missing information prior to denying the application. And keep a record of attempted contact with the household. So in terms of record keeping in regard to household applications, you need to keep on file approved applications. And with those approved applications, please indicate the approval date, the level of benefit. So is the application approved for free, reduced, or are they a paid student? And sign or initial the application just to have a verification that yes, someone has verified and reviewed this approved application. For denied applications, you still need to keep those on file and indicate the denial date, indicate the reason for denial, indicate the date the denial notification was sent. So if you deny an application, you do need to send an additional notification stating why the household application was denied. And again, just to verify as to why this application was denied, sign or initial the application just to show that you did have a two-step process when reviewing and denying the application. Approval and denial letters of the benefits should be sent to households. And all applications, including denied and inactive, must be kept on file at a minimum of three years plus this current year. So again, you need to keep the approved applications on file, the denied applications on file, the approval or denial benefit letter that you sent to the household, and all the records must be kept for a minimum of three years plus the current year. The School Nutrition Program Direct Certification. Oftentimes, you may hear it from our office as the DC list. So what does direct certification actually mean? Direct certification are children who are members of households receiving assistance under assistance programs. So again, like SNAP and TANF as an example. Um, eligible for free benefits without further application. So if you, you have a child that is on the direct certification list, they are automatically eligible for free benefits without a further application. So the direct certification lists are available for download from the Tennessee Meals Accounting and Claiming System. So once you log into TMAC, under the Applications tab, you will select Direct Certification, and then you will select Department of Human Services, SNAP, and TANF to find the DC list. Again, if you have any questions finding the direct certification list, please reach out to our office and we are happy to help you navigate TMAC in order to get the direct certification list for your school district. So to help recap the direct certification process and to help maximize student matches, Download not only your county, but all counties that touch your system, as well as any major counties nearby. Remember, the May file is the first list of the school year, and it contains every child receiving assistance benefits at that time. Subsequent months are updates to May and only contain children approved for assistance benefits within that month. Only the May file is a cumulative list. These lists can only be used within their intended school year. For example, the list for May 2022 through April 2023 can only be used for the 
2023 school year. And again, if you have any questions regarding the direct certification process, please reach out to your regional consultant. More on the direct certification process. So documentation to establish children's eligibility for free meals are based off of the name of child or household member currently receiving benefits, a statement certifying that each child is a member of a household where someone receives benefits for extending benefits. At least one piece of identifying information of the child attending the school should be on your list. So whether that's a child birth date, address, parent's name, child social security number if available, or the gender. So how are you going to help identify the information of the child's name to another piece of identifying information? Let's talk about extended eligibility. Eligibility for free meals is extended to all children in a household if one member has been directly certified under the SNAP or TANF assistant programs. These children are also considered to be directly certified. So extension of eligibility to all children in a family is considered if any child is identified as a member of a household receiving assistance under SNAP, FDPIR, or TANF. All children in the family as defined in CFR 245.2 shall be categorically eligible for free meals or free milk. This applies to children identified through direct certification or through a free and reduced price application. Eligibility is not extended for other source categorically eligible children. Other categories may include a migrant child, which is identified by the local educational liaison through section 1309 of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act of 1965, 20 USC 6399 or a foster child who is considered a child whose care and placement is the responsibility of a state or local welfare agency, or who is placed by a court with a caretaker household. Other categories may include homeless child, which is defined as a child identified as lacking a fixed, regular, and adequate nighttime residence under the McKinney-Vento Homeless Assistant Act or residing in a homeless shelter. Also, runaway child is a category, and that is identified by the local educational liaison through a program under the Runaway and Homeless Youth Act. Foster homeless migrant runaway or Head Start children to be categorically eligible as a foster child, a homeless child, a migrant child, a runaway child, or a Head Start child, the child's individual el eligibility or participation for these programs shall be established. Categorically eligible based on these programs shall not be extended to other children in the household. Foster, homeless, migrant, and runaway children and Head Start enrollees upon recipient of documentation as defined in paragraph 2, 2, and 2, 4 of the definition in CFR 245.2, the local education agency must approve each children for free benefits without further application must approve such children for free benefits without further application. All of these children count as a household of one when processing applications. Notification of household applications. Um, all DC households must be notified of free eligibility in writing. 
So since direct certified children are automatically eligible for free and reduced meals, so free meals, they still must be notified of that free eligibility benefit in writing. Notice of approval income applications. So those applications that you receive and they meet the income eligibility guidelines, the LEA must provide the household of the children's eligibility and provide the eligible children the benefits to which they are entitled within 10 operating days of receiving the application from the household. The notifications must include the following information. The child is eligible for free meal benefits. No further application is necessary. Appeal notification and instructions for notifying the LEA if the benefits are not wanted. And if applicable, an explanation of extended eligibility and how to notify the LEA of any additional children in the household. And also within that notification, the duration of eligibility must be included. So the eligibility is for the current school year and up to 30 operating days into the next school year. Notifications must also go out for denied applications. So the denied applications and the notice of denial. When the application furnished by a family is not complete or does not meet the eligibility criteria for free or reduced price benefits, the LEA must document and retain the reasons for ineligibility and must retain the denied application. In addition, the LEA must promptly provide written notice to each family denied benefits. At minimum, this notice shall include the reason for the denial of benefit, for example, income is excess of allowable limits or incomplete application, and it's best practice to list, list the items that are not provided in the application, so they have that whole incomplete list. Um, then also notification of the right to appeal, instructions on how to appeal, and a statement reminding parents that they may reapply for free or reduced price benefits at any time during the school year. Let's talk about overt identification. Any action that may result in a child being recognized as certified for or potentially, potentially eligible to receive free or reduced price school meals or free milk. LEAs and SFAs must assure that a child's eligibility status is not disclosed at any point in the process of providing free and reduced price meals or free milk, including when the child or household is notified of the availability of free and reduced price benefits, during certification and notification of eligibility, during the provision of meals in the cafeteria, at the point of service, during the provision of additional services, such as educational services to low-income children, or when the child pays for their meals. So disclosure, SFAs must be careful and vigilant when making decisions on disclosing eligibility information. This slide is taken from page 83 of the eligibility manual, and it's a needs to know basis. So any information you are disclosing is on a needs to know base, basis with the appropriate recipient and the appropriate information. As you can see, only persons authorized to receive eligibility information may have access, and it is typically only to disclose the children, child's name and eligibility status only. This chart shows you the recipient of information, what may be disclosed, and the requirements. Be sure to keep all student eligibility information stored in a locked, closed drawer or cabinet with limited access.
Here is a short list of different resources that can help you with benefit issuance and household applications. You may refer to the USDA eligibility manual provided at this link here. Also, we have school nutrition program processing application instructions on our website. We also have more information regarding the direct certification process on our website. And you may also find the USDA Food and Nutrition Service applying for free and reduced price school meals guidance helpful as you navigate the household application process within your district. From the information you've learned today or refreshed today, let's take that information and apply it to this activity. So consider the following responses for our example application as we review it momentarily. So the responses to the question, does this family qualify for free or reduced price meal benefits? May be, yes, they qualify for reduced price lunch benefits, but additional information is needed for the application to be complete. An option may be, yes, they qualify for reduced price benefits. Yes, they qualify for free price lunch benefits, but additional information is needed for the application to be complete. Yes, they qualify for free lunch benefits, or no, they do not qualify. Again, take these response options into consideration when reviewing the next slide. Now that you've had time to review the application, Let's move on to the next slide and walk through whether or not this applicant um, is eligible for free or reduced meals. So does this family qualify for free or reduced price meal benefits? Well, we need to determine the annual income and we do that by multiplying the Monthly income stated, so $400 times 12 pay periods equals $4,800 annually. Then we multiply the $633 by 24 pay periods, so that gives us $15,192 annually. Then we take the weekly income, so $150 times 52 pay periods equals $7,800 annually. By adding up those annualized income dollars, we get a total of $27,792 as a total household income. So with that annual income determination, the application is income eligible for free meals. However, it is incomplete. In order for the school food authority to provide the benefit to this household, the school food authority would need to ensure that the application is complete and accurate. So that may be reaching back out to get a social security number and ensuring the total household member number is correct. Thank you for attending our training for the day. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please reach out to your school nutrition regional consultant or contact our office at school.nutrition.tn.gov or you can give us a call at 800-354-3663. Thank you.